We're glad to have you here on the show today. This, of course, is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Mozak, and it's a pleasure to be alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Now, if you tune into our show regularly, You know about the courses that the foundation sponsors. If you're new to our show, we want to welcome you and tell you all about it. It's a great opportunity for you to get up to speed on everything you need to know to retire successfully. Have a modern retirement, one that you feel confident about. Now, these are courses that are taught at local universities right here in Michigan, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. We're going to be telling you about these courses. If you're ready to get signed up, though, right now, you can do that. You're welcome to visit the website. Simply go to Retirement Planning E. Edu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. Okay, so Michael, Kirk, I want to talk to you both today about an important topic, investing in retirement, the strategies that we might need to employ because things have changed over the years. We need to be savvy in this area. And really, it's about utilizing the right tools. So I want us to open our investment toolbox, so to speak, and I want the two of you to talk about what should be inside that toolbox for retirees. Well, I, I think, Megan, the, the, the goal should be not only what should be in your toolbox, but what are how, how do I look at risk? How do I look at these, tool, these tools uh, to provide us the outcomes we're looking for in retirement? Because I'm It is so different in retirement than it is during your accumulation years. And I know you guys are hearing this a lot. I know our listeners have been listening to us for a while and then they're reading people, reading articles from other people that are talking about how investing in retirement needs to look different. And it does because what's going to drive performance isn't the investments you choose. It won't be the investments you choose that will drive your performance. But when you take income from which accounts will drive your performance. And I know that sounds confusing and hopefully we'll dive into that today some more, but it's important to know it's not just choosing the investments. The, the other piece of this, Michael, is y- y- you almost have to compartmentalize your money, right? And, and, and I think that's how the general public is most comfortable learning. Fi- financial literacy is by compartmentalizing your money. And so what I think it is helpful if we start with just explaining the four buckets that we think that you should have as part of a retirement plan. Sure. So one of the reasons to zoom out on that point, we talk about the buckets, is because people typically compartmentalize just based on how they think about money themselves. So this is my account for retirement, uh, for vacation spending. This is my account for the next car purchase. So people are very used to bucketing or compartmentalizing the money. So we use that strategy to kind of help them thinking about this for retirement. So bucket one is cash, cash on hand, anything that's not invested that is just there for emergencies only. That is probably one of the most important buckets because people have to have that cash on hand for emergencies when they pop up during life. Why don't we start start just talking about bucket one for a minute before we go into all four buckets. Bucket one, cash, is not the same type of reserves that we've had and should have had while we are accumulating wealth. This is a bucket of money That needs to be pretty targeted so that when we have major market events in retirement, we can go to our liquidity bucket, the money in cash, to pull, to take income from so we're not pulling out of our investments in the stock market when we need money. So stick around. We're going to continue talking about these topics. We cover all of this in our courses. These courses are eight hours in length, Michael, taught over two evenings or one full Saturday. Taught at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Oakland University, in Livonia, and our Learning Center. We're also streaming these classes right now through Zoom so you can attend, because of COVID, in the comfort of your own home. To attend one of these courses, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we're glad to have you with us today. We're talking about investing in retirement. Kirk, you said our mentality around investing has to change once we hit retirement. Why is that? 
Well, a great example is bucket one, cash, right? So when we were younger, they tell us to have six to 12 months in emergency savings. And that's because you can't access all your other dollars in your 401ks and your IRAs without penalties. So we needed to have that emergency if we lost our job, we got sick, something happened. Before we were 59 and a half years old, that was the only place we could go to get our money. Once I'm over 59 and a half, once I'm retired, all of your money is free to you. There's, there is no penalties to access those dollars. So as a result, we may not need as much in a cash account, but we want to make sure we have a good, we would argue, thirty to $50,000 sitting in the bank. So if we have a market event, a recession, a pullback, the key, Michael, and we'll talk about this today is where you're pulling your money from. And you can't pull money to live on in retirement from accounts that are in, exposed to the market when the market is down. Look, if you pull money out of your portfolio when the market is down in the first five years of your retirement, the chances of you outliving your money increase by 75%. It's a, it's a big, big number. So knowing the accounts to pull and when to pull from is the key to performance. Right. The other key to performance, Michael, and we're going to talk about this as we go along, is understanding that your performance isn't what's going to drive your freedom. Performance needs to be measured a little bit differently in retirement. What gives me freedom, confidence to spend what I can spend and not allow short term market events to change those behaviors? And I think that's where a lot of people get themselves in trouble because they're just still focused on what mutual fund to get in, what investment can I get in, what returns can I get? I'm going to tell you those returns that you get aren't going to impact how comfortable you are and how much money you pull out on a monthly or an annual basis. They're still trying to hit home runs. And they don't understand the emotional relationship with their money is going to change. The relationship with money is going to evolve. And again, these are some of the things that we talk about in our eight-hour course. It's eight hours. Look, we know who attends our courses. They tend to be highly educated, four years of post-high school education. They tend to be affluent, investable assets of over a million dollars. These are the engineers, a lot of engineers, a lot of do-it-yourselfers, faculty, professors, physicians, executives, CPAs. These are the people who are attending these courses in the university so they can learn how to build a retirement plan to give them the freedom to spend what they otherwise wouldn't spend. So if you'd like to attend one of the classes at one of the universities, all you have to do is register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Back on the show with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, and they are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're ready to sign up for their courses, and these are courses that are taught all throughout the year, different locations and times at universities right here in Michigan, you can learn more about how to register and find a date and a location that works best for you by going to retirementplanningedu.com. Dot org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also register by calling 800-240-8981. We're tackling a huge topic today, investing in retirement. We've opened our investment toolbox, so to speak, and Kirk and Michael are sharing with us the different strategies you need to think about when it comes to investing. And we're going to talk about something that's very, very sophisticated. And in fact, uh, the terminology here, guys, is really high level. We're talking about (laughs) buckets. Am I right? Well, yes. I mean, it's not an accident. The entire industry has created their own versions of buckets. It's, it's, It's the way that us as savers, that's how we've been able to learn basic financial literacy. Really, it's by compartmentalizing our money. It makes us organize our thought processes around money and what we spend it on and how we spend it on it. And I, I, candidly, I think for retirement planning, bucketing is is really a critical tool for people to understand how their retirement plan should look. Because if you understand your buckets and what buckets money are coming from when, it helps for for, for the general average consumer to understand what's happening and why it's happening. And some people try to run before they can walk. The buckets are a really 
a really strong foundation to start thinking about what dollars are doing what for you in the plan. And then going forward, now you can start thinking about more aggressive, more in-depth strategies from there. I agree. So let's start with the basics. The four buckets are bucket number one's liquidity. This is your cash checking and savings, right? We have to make sure we have enough money so that when we have major market events, which throughout your retirement, you're going to have four to seven major market events that you can go pivot to this liquid cash bucket to take money when the market is down. This is going to be important to have this bucket. Bucket two, probably the most important bucket of the four. This is contractually guaranteed income that I can never outlive. These are going to be your Social Security dollars. These are going to be your pension dollars. These are going to be dollars that you can come to no matter if the market is up, down, sideways. It's not exposed to market risk. It may have some insured type of products in there. Some may, some may not. But this is a critical bucket, contractually guaranteed income that never changes no matter what the market conditions are, right? You're going to learn today the difference between running out of money and running out of income it's not the same thing. And if I have bucket two contractually guaranteed income, I can never outlive. Then I don't have to worry about running out of money because my income will always continue to pay. Bucket number three, this is what most all of you have. This is money in the stock market, stocks, bonds, ETFs. You notice I didn't say mutual funds. We'll explain why we don't think you should own mutual funds in a minute. But these are dollars, bucket three are dollars that are in the stock market exposed to risk. These are the dollars we're trying to grow. We want to be, if we have bucket one and bucket two properly allocated, we can be very aggressive with our dollars in the market to drive performance. As long as we have accounts to pivot to when we have times of volatility. And then Michael, bucket number four is legacy. Legacy is not just your children. It is also the surviving spouse. And there is so much planning that needs to be done to protect the surviving spouse that no one's talking about. Example, when one spouse predeceases the other spouse, that surviving spouse will end up with less money and pay a lot more taxes. For most of the people who attend our class who have net worth that are higher net worth, a million dollars or more, when one spouse dies, that surviving spouse's taxes are going up and they're going to pay more for Medicare whether they like it or not, because they're going from married, filing, joint to single. Then we want to make sure when it passes from the spouse to the children that we're protecting the children and making sure that the dollars you leave your children aren't exposed to a divorce potentially in your children's life after you're dead, right? We don't want to accidentally in leave money to an ex-son-in-law or daughter-in-law. There are, there's so many tax strategies around legacy planning for the spouse and the children that need to be a, a, a addressed and covered. And the problem is, is there's so many people with a million dollars, Michael, or more, they don't think they're rich. I know that's hard for some of the people listening to think. You got to have estate planning. You got a half a million dollars saved for retirement. There is, you need trust. You need the proper documents. You need things set up properly for the surviving spouse and then the children to avoid major mistakes. Well, especially when this is done ahead of time in advance with a, a mapped out plan as opposed to just kind of winging it as we go along, it can be done so much more efficiently. Michael, we know someone's going to die first. It is very unlikely they're both going to die at the same time. So if we know there's going to be a problem, we know the problems. 20, 30 years in advance, sometimes we know the problem that's going to occur. If we know that, there are solutions. We just have to plan today to make sure we have the flexibility to execute those plans after they're gone. Or charitable planning, leaving money to charities while you're alive to help fix tax problems as opposed to leaving it once you're gone. Totally, right? Why do people leave the money to charity after they're dead? Because they're afraid they're going to outlive it while they're alive, Michael. And that isn't the case. People don't understand what their money can do for them. If you're still living in this world and having advisors that are telling you that you, you can only live on 4% in retirement, you're way underspending what you could be spending. I could tell you people that attend our class, when they're done with the class, they learn, they know how to take six, seven, eight percent per year guaranteed that they'll never outlive from their mid sixties on. So what's also shocking is the amount of money people are they don't realize the amount of money they're going to be forced to take when they're in their 70s and 80s because of required minimum distributions, social securities, and pensions. And so they spend on so much less in their 60s 
so that they can, because they're afraid of outliving their money, not recognizing the government's going to force them to take so much more in their 70s and 80s. This is the critical piece of your, everything you've spent 30, 40 years saving. The critical piece is education. It's not the investment you choose that's going to drive success in retirement. Please hear us. It's why we teach our eight-hour classes at all the major universities. It's not an accident. We're invited to all the major universities. It's eight hours of education, and all you have to do to attend one of our courses is make a $29 donation to charity. We have classes at all the universities, wherever is closest to you, you can attend, or if you want to stay in the comfort of your home, we get it. We'll stream it to you while we're teaching the class from the university so you can see, be in your own home and you'll get your 200-page textbook at home. To register, all you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back right after this. It's always a pleasure to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazaret. They are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. They have a great offer for you today. If you're ready to get a leg up on your retirement planning, if you're not feeling especially confident and this is the year you plan to retire, you need to make plans to attend their courses. And these are great courses that are sponsored by the Retirement Education Foundation. They're taught at our local universities. That's right, the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. And it's your choice. You can attend a one-day course or a two-day course, and you can make plans to do that by going to retirementplanningedu.com. Dot org. You can also call the register. And keep in mind, spots do fill up quickly. So if you have a date and a location that works best for you, be sure to reserve your seat today. You can call 800-240-8981. We've been talking about the different tools you need when you're investing in retirement. And we've been talking about a very sophisticated approach using buckets. I think we're on bucket number three, Michael. Help us understand what that entails. So bucket three is all about the different investments in your, in your plan, typically 401ks, IRAs, or taxable investment accounts. Michael, it's, it's so look, we're going to spend the next two or three segments just talking about bucket three because there, there's so much to cover here. Yeah, and this is the bucket that everyone thinks is most important. They don't realize the importance of buckets one, two, and four. They want to spend all their time talking about bucket three. So it makes sense, Michael. That's how they amass their, they accumulated this wealth, right? And you got to think about, we're talking to people right now. Look, so, so people recognize the average baby boomer will have only saved $200,000 for retirement. So the average person, the average person is only going to say, have $200,000 saved for retirement and get the majority of over 90% of their income from social security. So now we're talking to the rest of the people who have half a million, a million, five million, ten million. We're talking to these people who are way above average. They've done such a great job. When someone does something really well, they get overconfident, Michael, right? And why did they do something so well? What did they do? Well, they invested in the stock market and they saved. They saved well and invested well, and that's why they're where they're at. And now here comes Kirk and Michael and the foundation, the charity, the Retirement Education Foundation, telling them that what has made them so successful is not what will make them successful in retirement. And it won't. It will not. It's a different game. It's a, it's a whole different strategy you need to deploy. But to Michael's point, everyone is obsessed and focused on the different investments and what I should be investing in. Let's talk about it. Let's just talk about it. I, I can tell you when we build a plan, it takes us 50 plus hours to build a retirement plan in our private practices for our clients. Now, I get it. We're a family office. It's a little different type of scenario, but it's 50 hours of comprehensive planning. I will tell you on the list of 10 of the most important things that need to be addressed when we build those plans, it, what we invest in is probably sixth on the list of 10. I know, but for all of you listeners, it's everything you guys. Like you, many of you think you really are good at this too, by the way, which is, I, I, I'm, I'm, we're not here to tell you the things you want. I'm not trying to sell you guys anything. So I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you you've been lucky. And I'm going to tell you when many of you have thought you've done well, you really have really underperformed what you should have done 
if you just followed a very simple strategy that doesn't mean you didn't do well, you did well, doesn't mean you didn't have a good average rate of return, you did, but I can tell you, I'll bet right now there is not a person on here over the last 20 years, there's not a person listening that it that individually beat what the S&P 500 did. Well, just to put some numbers behind that. So since the bottom of the 08, 09 crisis, the market's up about mid to high teens on average per year. So people think they got, oh, well, I got 12% in the past 10 years. I'm doing a good job. Well, if that's the case, you're not doing a good job. No. <laughs> no, the market's up over 500%. It, it, it might even be 600% now since the bottom. And we had we had a, someone in one of the classes tell us they had two different accounts. One account they've had, for, they've had them both for 20 years. And one account was about half the size of the other account. And he told he admitted to us. And one account was indexes for the past 20 years. He bought the indexes. One account he was stock picking. And he loves it. He spends hours researching, trading, uh, listening to the, the gurus. And he admitted to us he cost himself about a million dollars by trying to stock pick as opposed to indexing. Well, that's not even a debate. I mean, that's the joke of it, right? The whole value proposition of the financial service industry is they have some secret sauce or algorithm. They can stock pick and they've got the research and the data. You've got the Kramers. They have all day long, CNBC has their show of experts that come on talking about what you should buy, shouldn't buy, what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. None of them get, agree. They never agree. None of them beat the S&P 500. All you have to do and all you had to do was buy the S&P 500. I'm telling you, over the last 20 years, if you just took your million dollars over the last 20 years, didn't save a dollar more, just took a million dollars and bought the S&P 500, you'd have about five and a half million dollars, close to six million dollars now. That's all you had to do. I'm telling you, I know for a fact none of you have done that. There's no one. Some people trick themselves because they think that they're comparing their performance to the S&P 500 and they think they've done better. But what they've really done is just taken more risk. They right. took it towards the growth stocks, the, the Amazons, the Netflixes, the Googles, and they ignore those big drawdowns, but they see the final number. And I want to dig into this in the next, in the next session, comparing risk versus return and being efficient. 100%, Michael. Please understand, right? You could have guessed right over the last five years and been growth heavy on the large cap side and- just crushed it, and, and yeah, you beat the index for the last five years. I didn't say five years. I said 20 years because I, do you think you're good enough? To, oh, now I'm going to switch to value. Come on. No one is good enough. There hasn't been anyone good enough. Or small caps or internationals or all these different pieces. Nobody. Nobody. Kramer is underperforming the S&P 500 over the last 20 years, way over 100% underperforming. Not even close. Not even in the ballpark. Nobody is in the ballpark. No one can beat them. There is no one out there. So stop. Just stop the madness. You might like it and have your little play accounts. Go ahead. But don't take the core of your money and huge mutual fund managers and day traders and stock pickers or try to do it yourself and think you're going to beat the index. You're not. It's not that complicated. Now, game changes when you retire. Different discussion. Still want to use indexes, but we have to have different accounts that we pivot to depending on market conditions. Right now, it's a different game. So this is some of the things we talk about in our eight hours of education on how to build a successful retirement plan. If you'd like to attend one of our courses, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8900. Eight, one. And there's much more on the Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Back with Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you signed up for the courses yet? If not, I want to encourage you to do that right now. And here's how. You can call 800-240-8981. Here's the number again. It's 800 240 8981. Or you're welcome to go to the website to register. Simply visit retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can find a location and a day that works for you. You can even opt to attend the course virtually. That's right, in the comfort of your own home. 
It is up to you. So be sure to make plans to do that today. We've been talking about investing in retirement with Kirk and Michael today on the show. And, you know, I often hear about being a passive or an active investor. What does that mean? And how should retirees look at that? You know, Megan, so I want to talk about that. So can I, I want to table that just for 30 seconds because I'm listening to our show and people have been listening to us for years now, right? On, On all our different networks. And sometimes I get people that ask me, why do you constantly promote the class on your radio show? And I I think it's important. I want to answer this because I was listening to Megan say that, and it almost sounds salesy. And look, there's only so much education we can provide within an eight-minute segment. And we only have six of those eight-minute segments to provide the education in. If, If you're foolish enough to try to make retirement decisions based upon an eight-minute segment or a 48-minute radio show with sound bites, you're crazy. That is the whole purpose of our radio show, is to give you enough information and education so you recognize the importance of spending eight hours in a classroom so that you know all the different levers that you can pull and need to pull to be able to achieve and have your retirement plan you're looking for in retirement. That is the purpose of this. And so here we are today trying to talk about difficult topics in eight-minute segments. And I'm thinking to myself, I hope people recognize that the all the we're just giving you tidbits here. The information, all this information is shared, and we go into depth in the courses, but you need to come to a class. And all it costs you is $29 to, to charity. That's all we're asking you to do. This is it's there's no there's no sales pitch here. This is purely educational. It's why the foundation was created over 10 years ago, specifically so people can have the freedom to spend in retirement, what they would not spend without this education. Trust us, you're not going to spend what you're going to be able to spend if you didn't come to this class. You need this course. So back to passive versus active. A little bit of a soapbox, I'm sorry. But passive versus active is an age-old debate in our industry. I will tell you that the debate will never end and will always rage on because the entire, I said this last segment, the value proposition, that's all the financial service has for you. That's it. That's it is they have a better way to pick investments than you do. That's it. And the truth is, they don't. They never have. There is no data. Give me any research over any extended period of time that shows that active management beats passive management. It does not exist, Michael. It can exist. That's why, so one of the reasons people- He's speechless. I don't know. (laughs) No, right, because that's crazy. they, They try to- they're trying to sell their service of saying, look, investing is rocket science. You couldn't, you, Mr. and Mrs. Investor, couldn't hope to do this on your own. Instead, pay us to do it for you. We'll do it for you. And they know we've, how many active funds have we sort of unwound and, and deconstructed to find out they're just hugging the benchmark? Thousands and thousands. So they're charging an extra, they're charging 1% or 2% versus the index costing 0.03%. And they're, they're providing the exact same performance usually less than performance because of fees and because they make bets. They make bets, Michael. 40% of all mutual funds fail in 10 years. Here, that is not, that's that's the number. 40% of all mutual funds that are created fail within 10 years. Ready? Another one, Michael. And the reason they do that, so the company can get rid of that track record. So if a a fund company has a mutual fund they're offering that does very poorly after five, six, seven years, instead of trying to fix it, they just say, you know what, let's just kill this fund, remove that performance from our history, and move on to a brand new fund with no track record. Right. (laughs) Start scratch. We've got this theory. This is going to perform this way. Here's our projections. Here's how it back tests based upon if we did these things that we say we're going to do in the future. (laughs) Right? I mean, it's craziness. They have some secret algorithm, secret sauce. Come on, listen. 40% of all of them fail in 10 years. There is not one mutual fund manager ever in history, not one manager that has been able to stay in the top 25%, the top quartile for five consecutive years. They've never been able to do it. So they've never been able for five consecutive years to, to win. They've never been able to bet or guess right. Mostly in due, due to the fact of reversion to the mean. So if one fund has a really hot year or a hot quarter because they overweighted tech or healthcare or utilities, whatever it is, on average, the next one, two, three years, 
that sector or that growth versus value be, tends to revert back to the mean. Uh, exactly. So the average retail investor, right, they chase performance. They're looking for the most recent best performance. That's what they're investing in. That is when they're most likely to underperform. When a stock gets expensive, there's a coral, there's a, um, a reversion to the mean. When something gets expensive, it pulls back. And then when something's less expensive, it tends to run. They go in cycles. Who knows the cycles? No one. Is there any patterns to these cycles? There hasn't been. It doesn't exist. And to that point, if someone did have a crystal ball, they would not be sharing it with retail investors. No. They would be making themselves billions of dollars in Wall Street. 100%. Instead, what they do is they pretend like they know, they go on TV, they move markets with their words and their emotions, bet with that, and then flip the script and bet the other way. It's a game. That's the frustrating part. All you got to do to win this game, all you, tell your kids, young people, all they have to do is buy the index. That's it. Don't open a statement for 20 years and they win. Stop trading on Robinhood. Stop trading on Robinhood, please, right? Seriously. Where you can't even name a beneficiary on Robinhood. It's crazy. What if you die? On all, there's no beneficiaries allowed on Robinhood. That's what going happens to, to the going money? To, going to probate, good luck. What in the world? It's crazy. Anyways, so these are some of the things we teach in the class. In the class, we get a little more. We've got eight hours. We can specifically spell out how simple the investing part is, but more how more complicated the income planning is, the tax planning is, the spousal surviving spouse planning is, and how much money you can afford to take out when and how and how much so you don't underlive what you otherwise could be spending. See, our fear is, our, our, you know, I'll, I'll say this the next segment, I'll save that. But I, I'd encourage all of you to attend one of our eight-hour courses. It's All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we will be back shortly. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And as you know, the foundation sponsors courses throughout the year, and these are really deep dives into all things retirement planning. If you're just hoping that your investments and your 401k get you through retirement, well, I have to tell you, it's much more complex than that. A modern retirement takes modern solutions, and that's what these courses are designed to do, to help you understand what's at stake in a 21st century retirement, give you the confidence to proceed so you can have that successful retirement that you've always dreamed about. And it's easy to get registered. There's two ways to do it. You can go online to retirementplanningedu.org. Again, it's retirement planning edu.org or call today 800-240-8981. Been talking with Kirk and Michael today about investing in retirement. And listen, we know investing, it does have an element of risk, right? That's how it works. But how much risk should we be taking if we're getting close to retirement or we're newly retired, Kirk and Michael? Uh, Megan, I love this question because I think the entire planet... <laughs> is off when we're talking, we're all doing this wrong about risk. Because, and I, I really want, because I think Michael's very insightful when it comes to this, risk should not be a label. It needs to be a number. But everyone's everyone in our industry tries to avoid that number because to be able to identify the number would require some more advanced planning and time that they're unwilling to spend. So instead, they, they settle on, I'm a moderate investor. Well, the truth is none of you know what that means. Real quick, just so they know, a moderate investor in a 2008 type of market event would lose about 33 to 35% of their portfolio. Let me rephrase. 30 to 35% of their portfolio is how much they would lose as a moderate investor. As a conservative investor, Michael, it's 17 to 23%. And that shocks people. People come to the class a lot of times saying, well, I'm approaching retirement, so I'm going to shift down to moderate conservative. And we point out to them, okay, so what does that mean to you? And they say, okay, that means I shouldn't lose more than 12%. And we say, okay, so that we have some news for you. It's not what that means. And the person who is helping you with that didn't appropriately guide you towards this. Michael, it's, you have to be in, it's Warren Buffett who said it, and we use it all the time in every show, I think. You have to be insane to risk what you have, 
for something you don't need. So your risk needs to be driven by what do I need to give me what I want in retirement? That's the answer, not greed, not some made up number. I had someone the other day that said, I'm not retiring until I hit $3 million, which was insane because they were at, I think it was two and a half million dollars and it was going to produce, if I remember correctly, about 180,000, almost $200,000 a year for the rest of their life, which was 50,000 more than they wanted every year for the rest of their life. They already won the game. They won the race. They won the marathon, but yet they're continuing to rerun it. Go back 10 miles to rerun the last 10 miles again to see if they can get to their magical number that's meaningless. Well, that's what everyone comes to see us at the class, and they have a number in their head of what they think they can tolerate. And first of all, I would challenge that. Some people say, I can tolerate a 40% correction. And no, you can't. They haven't experienced that in over 10 years. So I'd be, I'd be surprised if they And they can't experience could. it when they retire and no one else is paying them a paycheck, but go ahead. Exactly. But we talk about what's more important than what you can tolerate is what, how much risk do you need to make this work? If you have more than you need or you're very close, why are we still taking a ton of risk if we don't need that risk anymore? Now, Michael, some might say is, well, I, I, I know what I want, but legacy is important to me too. Okay. Okay, now this is where planning comes in. There's ways to create a significantly greater legacy without putting your own retirement at peril. But you first, see, see, that's the piece. That's why this class is so important, Michael. They need to know what their money will do for them. And nobody listening today knows. It's not 4% rule. It's stupid. That is the stupidest. No one knows. And even if they think they know, they're not going to be comfortable Because when they're taking their whatever 6 7% that someone told them they could take when they're 70 years old and we have a market event, a recession, they're going to stop spending. Their short-term market events are going to impact their spending patterns in a retirement that could be one year, 10 years, or 30 years, and you have no control over that. Well, that is one thing we hear all the time is I'm going to, if, if people make the mistake of going to cash because they're trying to time the market, oh, which is a massive mistake, we hear things like, well, I'll get back in once things settle down. And I air quotes, once things settle down, things will never settle down. There will always be an election, tax law changes, COVID, uh, geopolitical events, something going on in the world that will make someone nervous. Michael, in a, an average retire, 30-year retirement, they're going to have four to seven major market events. In a thirty year, it's going to happen four to seven times. That's that's just good. It's going to happen. So how do I set myself up to not react and behave appropriately? The other funny part, Michael, is I love when people say I'm going to cash until things settle down, and people don't. And they usually go to cash after something bad has happened. And when do we have the best markets in history? After something bad has happened. Every time after the something bad has happened is when the market's been its best. So you can't do that. You can't play that timing game. No one has a crystal ball. No one's going to be able to tell you. I, there's people on TV, experts for the last six years, actually longer than that, probably eight years now, that have been saying we're at the top. It's crashing. It's at the top. We're crashing. We're overspending. We're taking on too much debt, we're too much financial engineering, too much quantitative easing. We're at the top. I guarantee if we pull our listeners right now, we'd have 70% of the people saying that we will have a recession in the next year. I I guarantee that. So are you going to cash now? That's crazy. You first need to understand how much your portfolio will lose. And can I tolerate that emotionally? Is that greater than I can emotionally tolerate before I'll change a spending or a life behavior? I don't want to change a behavior because of a short-term market event. The second, Michael, is... How much do I need to lose to give me what I want? How much risk do I need to take to give me what I want in retirement? Have I won already and I just don't know it? Many of you listening today, Michael, we see this all the time. Come to our class all the time. They already won. They did it. They're still working. They're working because they need Medicare. They're working because they need to hit this fictitious number. They don't even know what their money will do for them. They have no clue because no one has spent eight hours explaining and showing them how to build a comprehensive bulletproof retirement plan that gives them all the different levers to pull no matter what the market event is, no matter what happens in retirement. We know the traps. We've taught thousands and thousands of people. We are responsible for a billion and a half dollars. We know what all the traps and the risks. If you know the problems and you invest the time to build a plan, you can avoid those problems and mistakes. Sign up for one of our eight-hour courses. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, 
If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Stay with us more with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Here with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, they're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You have a great opportunity to get one step closer to your dream retirement, and that's by taking the next step, by signing up for these courses. These are courses that the foundation sponsors throughout the year, and they're taught at Michigan universities. So there should be a day and location that's very convenient for you. You can find out more by going to the website. You can register there, retirementplanningedu.org. If it's easier for you to make a phone call, that's an option as well. Simply call 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800 240 8981. We've spent our time on the show today really going in depth on investing strategies in retirement. And Kirk, during the commercial break, you said there was one more thing about risk you wanted to tell us about. What is it? Michael, will you tell us about risk adjusted return? Because I think this is a disconnect for a lot of do it yourselfers who think they're doing well. So I think it is too. We have lots of do it yourselfers come to us and they're pretty proud of their of their returns. And we have to remind them it's not just returns alone. It's returns and risk, risk risk-adjusted returns. How much return are you getting for the risk you're taking? Some people say, well, I beat the S&P 500 by 5% last year, and they're very proud of that. Well, they might have gotten 110% of the return, but they were taking 130% of the risk or some allocation like that where they're taking more risk for the return they actually got. So they think they beat the market. But on a risk-adjusted return, they did not. So, Mark, Michael, you're getting – it's a little nuanced, and it's something we spend a lot of time talking about in the class. And there's actually statistics, alpha, risk-adjusted return. There's measurables to be able to show you and understand how much risk did I take to get that return, and was it efficient, or was I lucky? So a lot of people just end up lucky and they don't understand that for the amount of risk they took, they're not getting the amount of return they should get. So when the market corrects, they're going to have all the risk that someone that would have gotten a much bigger return, they're going to take that much risk. So it's not just average rates of returns. It's risk adjusted returns. And that's something we spend a lot of time talking about in the class. But I think it all comes back to, Michael, I know we talked a lot about investing today. Again, full circle to the first segment where we said investment is number six on the list of importance on a scale of one to 10. It's number six on what is going to drive success in performance and retirement. It is not your investing. It is when do I take income from which one of my investments and accounts at what age to minimize taxes, folks, taxes, We teach in the class how to save hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxes over your lifetime by just knowing how to fill brackets, when to Roth convert, when and how to use charitable strategies, when to take income from which account at what age. So by minimizing taxes, we're also reducing the sequence of return risk. I don't have to take it, pull as much money out of my accounts to give me the amount I need to live on. Therefore, I have less concern about market volatility. It's knowing what accounts do I pivot to during what market environments to produce the best outcomes. It won't be your average rate of return. You just don't have money sitting in an account growing and then just the only thing that drives performance is return. It's not. You're pulling money out of those accounts. This is what we teach in the class is how do I construct a plan? Now, you need to understand it's complicated. There's no simple solution like Schwab likes to talk about on the TV all the time. There isn't. Taxes aren't simple. Income planning isn't simple. The market volatility isn't predictable and not simple. Having the right tools to use during the right market environment is critical. But to do that, we have to project out 30 years. If I do new, no planning, how much RMDs am I going to take? What tax break am I going to be in? What's going to happen to the surviving spouse? Then I run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of iterations working backwards to find the most efficient path through retirement. Well, that's one thing, Kirk, that you mentioned is these are all different levers of a plan. When you pull one lever, it changes five levers down the road there. And that's one thing that I think people come to the class sometimes with is a couple burning questions of, okay, you guys are the experts. When should I start Social Security? 
Should I take a lump sum or a pension? When should I start the pension? Should I take 100% survivor, survivor benefits or single life only? How much can I pull out at and 65? When we tell them, it depends, it depends, it depends, it depends. I feel like at first they get frustrated with us until they realize halfway through the class or by the end of the class, oh, all these levers really do impact each other. And there is no one size fits all, not even close. I'm glad you said that, Michael. That is big t- takeaway from today. Right now, what we're telling you is there is not one size that fits all. There's not one I'm telling you there's not one s- solution for social security. There's not a, the calculator online is useless. That is a useless tool. All thousand of them. There's thousands, right? They're all useless tools. I'm telling you. That isn't going to tell you. Does that tell you what percentage of your social security is going to be taxed or how does your social security's taxation impact the taxation on your required minimum distributions or your dividends and capital gains? Well, it does. So you have to understand what is provisional income? How do I calculate? How do I fill the bracket? How do I exclude capital gains and dividends if I'm in a 12% bracket in the timing around that? It is complicated. And guess what? You got a million dollars or more? You're not average. You might have thought you were average. You're not the average baby boomer. You have money, resources. You can have a much greater retirement than you think you can have. A 65-year-old married couple with a million bucks, they should be able to take out $70,000, $75,000 a year without outliving their money if they know how, when, and why. Look, old people aren't cheap, Michael. They're scared. I know the stereotype is old people, as you get older, you get cheap. You're not cheap. They're scared, Michael. Our fear for the, our listeners, we know the listeners, people listening here are not the average retirees. You have saved money for retirement. Our fear for, for you is is not that you're going to outlive your money. Our fear for you is that you're going to underspend what you otherwise could be spending. You just don't know what your money can do for you. And there's no one size fits all to get you the best outcomes. You want best outcomes. You've earned it. You deserve it. So go to an eight-hour class. We're teaching them at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland University, Eastern Michigan University. We're streaming them live on Zoom while we're teaching in the universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.